Hey, welcome back for another episode. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, I get a lot of questions about uh, the FJ here and what kind of uh, mods I have on it, what kind of tools I have in it, the things I carry with me, um, and why I have those things and what I think of them. So we're going to go over that today and do a little vehicle tour. I'm camped out uh, just on the northeast corner of Yellowstone National Park, just outside the park, along the Beartooth Highway. And so between trails, the FJ's pretty clean, and it's up on the trailer, which is really clean. And so great opportunity to take a look around. So let's start under the hood. Uh, first of all, we can see that it's very dirty under the hood because I'm always driving through dust. So I don't really clean under the hood because it would just get really dirty again immediately so and it doesn't actually hurt the engine so whatever so I've got a just a standard Toyota battery that's the one that came in it when we bought this thing two years ago and it's worked great it supports the fridge that we just got I don't have any fancy wiring going on probably not fancy enough um, got my air compressor right up here uh, which Actually, I'm not too happy with, I'm happy with the air compressor, but I'm not happy with where this uh, manifold is mounted because this interferes with the strut that's supposed to be here. And so I have to prop the hood open and that kind of stinks. So, and also this hose right here ends up rubbing the hood right here. So I haven't had this in for very long. It's got this bracket. You can see it's mounted here. I'm not sure who makes that bracket, but I don't really like this location. And so I might have to change that sometime soon. Since this is a 2010 FJ, uh, I had to relocate the washer bottle. And so I went ahead and got this one from Expedition 1. It's a nice tank. It's very sturdy. Um, it, it does its job pretty well. Back there you can see my breather for my differenti rear differential and um, it seems to be doing pretty well right there. So nothing, nothing too incredibly exciting under the hood. A lot of dirt. Pretty standard stuff single battery haven't had a problem with that even running like i said a refrigerator moving down from the hood i've got hid uh, retrofit headlights um it's got a halo ring right there uh, the hids are quite a bit brighter than the than the factory headlights uh, so they serve a purpose that way and eh, they look pretty cool i'm not too concerned about looking cool but why not? They work better than the factory ones, so it's all good. It serves a function. Um, let's see, I've got a 2019 FJ Summit badge, which is cool. And then uh, I put in a black grill. I blacked out the grill and the mirrors. They weren't like that originally. They were silver. And I've got some Baja Squadron Pro, Baja Design Squadron Pro lights mounted here and uh those are super bright i'm really happy with those i don't do enough night runs <clears throat> for my winch i'm using a worn vr10 uh vr10 s so it's got a synthetic line in there which is good i've had to use it a lot if you watch my videos you've seen me use that quite a bit it's uh hasn't failed me yet so this bumper is uh from expedition one it is their um kodiak bumper i think it looks pretty cool it is really strong i like it a lot but the one thing i don't like about it is its size it's really kind of bulky like right here there's a lot there's a lot hanging down here a lot of metal hanging down here and i hit it a lot here so i'm i've been looking around for some higher clearance bumpers 
and I think pretty soon I'm going to have to switch that out. But I have no complaints about the bumper really itself in terms of build quality or anything like that. It's a great bumper, really strong. Before I started trailering the FJ a lot, I, uh, I felt this was really important to have these uh, hoops on here for protection against uh, hitting animals, deer, and things like that. I didn't want to total the FJ if I hit a deer. So I put that on there. Now that I trailer the FJ a lot, I'm thinking more that I don't really, don't really need that. So that might go away in a future bumper update. I haven't mounted any lights in the bumper just because I've never gotten around to it. Lights are expensive and honestly I don't go out at night a lot so lights haven't been a huge deal for me. Underneath here we've got bud built 3 16 uh, steel skid plates that go all the way back including the gas tank. They are powder coated white. I know that powder coating for skids and rock sliders is uh, discouraged by some because you can't touch it up with paint, but actually you can touch it up with paint. <laughs> when I get a scrape in it, I hit it with some, uh, some rattle can paint and it keeps it, keeps the rust off. So not having a problem with that. And the top of the, the top of the, uh, skids and the rock sliders that are powder coated. I think the powder coating lasts pretty well on the unexposed part. So I feel like that's good rust protection and more durable than paint. So I'm happy with powder coating things that hit rocks because it works fine for me. The bud built skids have been really great. Um, they slide across rocks really well. I like steel uh, better than aluminum. Not necessarily even for strength. I think uh, when I, I've seen aluminum hit rocks, slide across rocks, the aluminum flakes off where the steel just kind of deforms a little bit on the surface. So rocks, you seem to be able to slide over rocks better where aluminum seems to grab rocks. Um, just something I've noticed. So I like the steel. I like the three, three sixteenths. I don't think the weight uh, of them is really too big a deal. Um, it hasn't really affected me very much. So as you saw in the last video, I just installed a new, uh, um, Toyota steering rack because I blew out the old one and uh, that job is kind of a pain. So <laughs> I recommend not blowing out your steering rack. I also removed my sway bar. Now, I don't know how much benefit removing your sway, sway bar actually gives you, but eh, I thought I'd give it a try while I had everything apart. I just didn't put it back on. So we'll see how that goes. All right, here we have the ARB snorkel. Um, I'm going to put a pre-filter up there. I think, I think if you're going to have a snorkel, I think putting a pre-filter up there is probably making the best use of a snorkel. That looks cool. And I guess you can get, you know, colder air to the engine and that's good. Uh, but you can do that with the pre-filter too. Um, but mostly a snorkel is for cleaner air. I don't drive through a ton of water that I need a snorkel for, but I do drive through a lot of dust. And so I think a pre-filter uh, up on top, one of those round things is definitely in my future. I like the snorkel, it's this, uh, the Safari snorkel, it's really strong. Uh, I've really beat the crap out of it. I've, I've hit it really hard and uh, it hasn't cracked or anything. So I like the quality there. All right, tires, as many of you can see, I'm running the Milestar Patagonia Mud Train tires. They've been really great in terms of traction. They do great in the rocks. Um, really good traction. Um, they seem to be wearing a little bit quickly. I don't know. We'll see in the long term. I think they've got about 4,000 miles on them now. About 90% of that 4,000 miles is pretty rough off-road. So a lot of rocks. A lot, a lot of rocks. You can see my sidewall is taking a lot of abuse. Um, this is all superficial damage, but damage nonetheless, they're getting pretty, pretty chewed up after 3,500 miles or so in the rocks. 
I've got them mounted on the Stealth Custom Series SCS F5 wheels. These are 16 inch. These tires are 315, 75, 16. And then the uh, Stealth Custom Series F5 uh, in bronze. I just chose bronze because it's not black because just wanted to try something different. But I really like the wheels. I like how light they are. They're one of the lightest wheels you can get to uh, offset the weight of the heavy tires because having less unsprung weight is good. My front suspension is, isn't anything particularly fancy. It's Dobinson's. Um, it's their extended travel setup there. Now you'll have to excuse the yellow and red. Um, I just ordered it and didn't really think about the colors. I don't mind it so much, but I guess it's kind of the McDonald's colors. It's like mustard and ketchup, but that's okay. <laughs> they worked really well. Um, I really liked having them on and uh, they've been really great. Up above that, I've got the Dobinson upper control arm. Again, no problems. I think a lot of these upper control arms are pretty much the same in how they function. SPC is probably the most unique, uh, but this one, Dobinson's, is a lot like all the other all the other aftermarket upper control arms you can get. Lower control arms are factory, totally stock. Haven't had a problem with those yet. Um, I have taken a little bit of damage on the alignment tabs not enough to cause a problem yet but so they've been, they've been holding up pretty well these factory lower control arms no problem there and uh, again the Davison's up on top I don't know how many inches my lift is I guess it's three they call it a three inch lift but in real world it's probably three to four inches of lift um, all around so here you can see my ever-evolving body mount shop. Hopefully I, I just cut a little bit more off. We'll see if we rub any more. The uh, mount is exposed, which I, I think is fine. Hopefully we don't rub on the actual mount itself. All right, my rock sliders are from White Knuckle Off-Road. They have a a slight bump out at the back they've been excellent they're really heavy duty really beefy um they are bolted on so i'm gonna have to weld those on eventually because i'm starting to see a little bit of flex uh, where they're bolted on they're getting lifted up so it's got this nice flat bottom which is good uh, stronger than just a round tube for rock sliders. I've got these ditch lights here. Um, those are uh, Baja Design Squadron Sports. And uh, I'm pretty happy with the Baja Design lights. They function great and I like the design. I think they're cool and they're highly functional. This is a a factory antenna in case you were wondering radio antenna it works pretty well it's gotten me out of out of some tight spots so okay we're underneath the vehicle now i've got stock exhaust you can see my muffler is pretty crunched in right there at the front but it still isn't noisy so that's okay got my uh, factory drive shaft which is slightly damaged from when we were on the four dice trail hit some rocks with it but it's still smooth going down the road and uh, i don't think it's gonna break and it doesn't vibrate it's just got a little ding and some scrapes in it no big deal i don't think moving back this way <clears throat> i've got the factory rear axle and supporting that are your ResFab links, pan hard bar there, and then upper and lower links from ResFab. The uh, links from ResFab have been 
really good in function. They uh, are very strong and thick and the ends are offset, which prevents binding and all that when you, when you get all flexy and stuff. One complaint about them is that the powder coating is coming off pretty severely and that started coming off after only having them on the vehicle for a few thousand miles. So great links, bad powder coating. But again, I'm not too upset about that. For rear coils, again, those are Dobinson coils. They are the extra long coils. You can see up at the top there, there's that bunch of bunched up coils up there so that the coils don't fall out when the axle droops way down. My uh, bump stop um, is a little bent, but that's no big deal, <laughs> I guess. So there's a lot of things on the vehicle that aren't quite perfect, but, but aren't necessarily a big deal to me. So everything's still working and I don't feel really at risk for those things breaking at this point. Uh, Dobinson shock shocks here on the back. These again are the extended travel. I really like that setup. Um, <clears throat> there's some controversy about, oh, does that extended travel just lower everything without actually giving you any extra travel? But it definitely gives you extra travel. Absolutely, absolutely 100% gives you extra travel. And we're having the 35 inch tires, if they stuffed up any higher, they would, they would rub like crazy. But um, <clears throat> I think having that back there uh, helps out the front, having the independent front suspension, you know, everything's so stiff. You got to have, you got to have something in the back to, to help out that front since the front's not really doing anything for you. So I, I like the Dobinson's extended travel suspension setup. All right. One of the coolest things I've got is this rear bumper. Now, typically the bumper is part of the, the actual bumper is part of the frame. There's this big frame piece right here that goes all the way across. Well, on this one, on mine, that's been cut out and then new mounting points have been welded onto the frame. And then a new cross member was welded in here that goes all the way across. Um, and then I had a, a hitch put on here to a new mounting plate that's on that new cross member. So this big piece of frame was cut out. And so the whole back end is, is sucked way in. <coughs> so this high clearance rear bumper is awesome. I love it. One of the best, one of the best things I've, I've done to the FJ. Um, it took about 10 inches off the the rear end of this thing so it takes a big rock for me to bottom out on that also this bumper is a swing out as you can see and it swings out to the passenger side which may seem odd but i like it just fine and uh it gets gets all this weight off of the uh, rear hatch door which is nice and light now those hinges are not sweating anything so I really like that. In the corners here, I have uh, Warrior products um, panels here. They're they're metal, not plastic. This one's got a little bit dented up here. Oh, I should mention uh, uh, the guy who did this rear bumper. His name is uh, Eric Lively. He lives in Utah. Uh, a lot of fabrication there. It's not just a bolt-on bumper. But it's pretty awesome. As you can see, I am missing a roof rack. Um, this FJ has never had a roof rack. It didn't have one when we bought it, and I don't care. I don't. Uh, I had. I don't really have any interest in having a roof rack. There's been so many situations where we barely clear a tree that's hanging over a, a trail or or whatever, and I just haven't found a use for a roof rack. So. I haven't gotten one and 
so far I'm not planning on getting one. All right, moving in here, uh, I've got these orange box uh, panels mounted on the back door and in the corner and in the corner here and then uh, up on the dash there. These panels from Orange Box are pretty good. You can tie all kinds of things to them. For instance, you can see I have a chainsaw tied to this back door panel along with uh, my tire deflator. And sometimes I have other little things on there. But the big one is this chainsaw. This Milwaukee M18 chainsaw is awesome, by the way. Really love that. Right over here, I have a very large block of wood. It's uh, a four by 12, I think. About two feet long, big, huge block of wood. You never know when you're gonna need a block of wood. You can put a jack on it. Um, right here, it's serving its function as a spacer for the refrigerator. Keep that back vent away from the side of the vehicle so it has ventilation. And so it stores there and it spaces the fridge for me, which is pretty cool. Got some jumper cables up here in a little bag. So the refrigerator, it's worked very well. Uh, very happy with it. Um, it's a cost way. Got it on Amazon. It's, uh, it's about $400, which is about four or five or $600 less than a Dometic or an ARB. Uh, it's a 55 quart and I've got nothing but positive feelings about it. It's, it's pretty awesome. Open it up. It's uh, got a light inside. It's got a back section there and then a divider. And uh, it uh, opens and closes nice and secure. Feels really good. Now, it's the same as the refrigerator. It's the same refrigerator as uh, Smitty, Bil Smitty Built Cells. And so uh, there's actually a cover from Smitty Belt, Smitty Built, having trouble saying that, uh, that fits on this Costway refrigerator. It's uh, just a little extra insula insulation and helps the refrigerator do its job a little bit better. All right, miscellaneous items inside here. I've got my air hose that I can hook up to my air compressor that's underneath the hood for blowing up my tires, which is great. I've got some chainsaw bar oil there. Um, I've got recovery, recovery straps here. I've got two 30 foot straps and a tree saver strap there. I've got this really awesome jack. This is a really cool thing that I think, uh, is really nice. I first saw one of these recently, uh, in use on the Rubicon trail and on four dice, uh, Jeff Greenwood was using one of these. It is a jack stand and a bottle jack all in one. And this top can get taller. So even on super lifted vehicles, um, you can pick up the vehicle. I also have a, a high lift jack and I've got the bottle jack uh, that the vehicle came with. So I've got three jacks in here, which is good, I think. Um, you can never have too many jacks and ways to jack up the vehicle. Okay, so spare parts that I carry. I've got an outer tie rod end and I've got an inner tie rod end and I've got a CV axle. Definitely, these are three things that everybody that everybody should be carrying in their FJ up the off-road. Inner, inner and outer tie rod and at least one CV axle because these things break. Let's see. Pick this up on the uh, Rubicon Trail. This is a spill kit. In case you're dripping oil everywhere, you don't leave it out on the trail because oil is bad. Uh, let's see. I've got a knee pad because when you're working out, if your CV axle breaks and you got to kneel down, this is more comfortable than rocks. So um, up there you can see I've got a gallon water bottle. I carry gallons of water with me out on the trail. There's another one hiding behind this sleeping bag, which I've got. Keep that in here just in case I end up camping 
and also this big foam pad which is really unsightly and huge but it's okay because I keep the back seats folded down all the time but uh, it makes a nice sleeping pad so I've got a backpack over there you can see the pink strap on there it's got uh oh uh, you know toilet paper and paper towels and uh wipes that kind of thing in there practical things that uh you might need all right so i've got a couple bags of tools wrenches of course obviously metric don't carry any standard just carry all metric so i've got yeah wrenches and sockets shallow and deep sockets all the way from eight millimeter to 24 millimeters and then i've got a few impact sockets uh, because i do carry a milwaukee impact which is really great for taking off wheels or any kind of bolts really awesome big pair of channel locks that's an essential tool for doing inner tie rods four pound sledge that's an essential tool for many things really you need one of these and uh, i've got pry bars all kinds of uh, pliers needle nose your cv lasso you got to have one of those vice grips so that's the kind of tools i carry um uh, things to cut with a little tiny hammer a little tiny hammer can come in very handy so that's my kind of tool collection in here it's uh it's enough to do uh, most trail repairs if i can't repair it with these tools then i'm gonna be walking i've got this bucket and no it's not for pooping in it's just a bucket because it's it can be handy to have a bucket right now i have some propane and a little stove in here there we go so a little stove with me and i've got a tent um that's actually up in the truck right now but i'll carry a tent in here as well in case i need that when i'm out on the trail so it's not a pooper it's just a handy bucket all right so here you can see i've got window cleaner clean windows are great bug spray and a container of bungee cords i mean you never know when you're gonna need a bungee cord here's my cb antenna that i store back here under the seat up here you can see the top of my high lift jack i keep my high lift jack inside so it doesn't get dirty and it doesn't get wet and it doesn't get rusty because it's a mechanical device and mechanical devices don't like water or dirt and so when i pull it out of the vehicle it's clean and not rusty and fully functional every time love it nothing too special happening up here in the vehicle i've got a switch here that i looks bad um just haven't put a stock switch in there and then on my switch panel, I've got my locker switch and my air compressor switches here. Nothing else. Pretty plain. I've got a CB right here. So hanging on the orange box grate. Those are my wife Elizabeth's sunglasses and uh, another knife right there, which is really handy to have. You never have too many knives, knives around. So, uh, this trailer brake controller, uh, I did not install that and I also haven't removed it, but it was there when we bought the vehicle. So, and actually one time I pulled this trailer that the vehicle's on, I had to haul the trailer with the FJ because the truck broke down and having the trailer brake controller was really great. Well, we might as well take a look at this side, right? I've got uh, a little bit of toilet paper right here. Don't worry, I've got more in that backpack in the back. More bug spray, binoculars, and a paper towel. Here's the other end of my CB antenna. And a shovel. That's more for pooping. So, um, 
and there's the bottom of the high lift jack. It just goes straight across the back there. And I think that's a good spot since I don't have to use the back seat of my FJ. So there you have it. Well, I think that about covers it. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask. Um, in the comments in this video or any other video, just shoot me any questions you want or at offroadhub.official at gmail.com. You can email me there. Any questions, thoughts, whatever you'd like. Just no spam. I hope you liked uh, the quick tour around uh, my FJ. You got to see some of the things I carry with me on all these trails. And um, if you haven't subscribed already, I highly recommend it because I release a new video every Monday, and Thursday. They're almost all trail videos. They're all pretty exciting. You don't want to miss them. So subscribe and like this video. Leave lots of comments. I love to read everyone's comments and respond to them. So do that, and we'll see you next time.